guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's Sylvian Man, Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of When Stars Fall. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Silas, I don't think the tent is large enough for all of us. Silas looked at the tent. I see your point. It appears it would be a tight squeeze to fit all of us in it. I suppose one of us could sleep outside while the other two share the tent. Since you are my guest, what would you suggest? Cuddle with Silas. Hell yeah, we gonna cuddle up, boy! Uh, pause it right there. Alright, cuddle up. I think if you and I were to sleep close together, we can all fit in the tent. Oh? And would I be the big spoon or the little spoon in this scenario? Your choice. You can choose whichever you're more comfortable with. I'll keep that in mind. Silas walked past me toward the tent. As he passed, I felt him brush his tail against my leg for just a moment. Follow me. Wait, are we gonna... I followed Silas to the tent. He opened the flap and stepped inside. I followed behind. Holy! Whoa! whoa. Um, holy shit, that's a tent? My god, it must be a TARDIS. Jesus. Talk about bigger on the inside. How? Magic. I figured that, so the tent is just another cube that holds a house instead of a tent? Yes and no. The tent merely acts as a threshold. Think of the tent like a door. You start in one room, when you walk through the door, you enter another room. It's just that this door currently connects the woods where we were and the house where we are. I think I get it. So the woods outside of the window there, at the window there aren't the same woods as the ones we were in. Correct. As you can probably tell by the green leaves, it's not fall here. Wait, are you saying the tent connected us to the other side of the world? Silas smiled. Precisely. Yep. Magic is amazing. Oh, you're definitely going to have to show me more magic sometime. I look forward to it. For now, let me show you where you'll, be, where you'll be staying for tonight. Silas led me up the stairs and down a hallway. The inside of the house was definitely big, and I had a feeling there was more to see, but Silas stopped in front of the first door on the right. He opened the door, and we stepped inside. Oh, that's a nice bed. Damn, this room is so big, and look at that bed! I don't think I've ever stayed in a room this nice before. Well, I suppose I wouldn't know what I wouldn't know that for sure. This is where you will spend the night. There's an adjoining bathing chamber through that door. Feel free to use any of the sundries in there. Oh, and there are some spare clothing items in that wardrobe over there that you can that you can that you can use should you like. Silas led me back out of the room and down and down to the near end of the hall. We passed a couple other doors that Silas told me were mostly used for storage. Silas opened the door at the end of the hall and I should be inside. Oh, that's pretty. This is my room. Should you need anything in the night, you can find me here. And that pretty much concludes the tour. Shall we get something to eat? <laughs> I could go for something to eat. The snacks in the carriage were good, but not very filling. Sure, that sounds great. Thank you, Silas. My pleasure. Silas led me back downstairs to the dining area. Mr. Jurda had already was already hard at work preparing what looked to be some kind of stew as we entered the room. Ah, um, I see you're already preparing our meal. Thank you very much. Second, y'all, it is water time. Hmm. Okay. Just doing my job, Master Teagland. Silas rolled his eyes at the title, but didn't say anything about it. Since you're already in here preparing the meal, I suppose the carriage is unloaded and horses taken care of? Indeed, sir. Very well. I shall go set up the barrier, then. Marcus, would you mind assisting Mr. Jurda with the meal? Yeah, I think I can do that. As tempting as the magic sounds, I think I'd rather help with dinner or maybe get to know Mr. Jurda more. I'll prepare the meal. Very well. Sounds like a plan, then. Silas laid a hand on my shoulder and pinned my gaze with a serious expression. If you burn our meal, I'll make you sleep outside and let you be eaten by whatever may happen by... Be, whatever may happen by in the dead of night. I swallowed hard. I really hope he's joking about that. Silas smiled and walked toward the entrance. Anyway, best of luck. Silas exited out the front door and I caught a glimpse of the autumn woods beyond. Even knowing it's magic, it's still strange to see two completely separate places connected by just a door. I turned and saw a sink near the, en near the end of one of the counters and went over to wash my hands before handling the food. Without thinking, I turned one of the knobs on the edge of the sink and began washing my hands in the warm water after putting some soap from a dispenser on them. How did I know, that how did I know what these were and how to operate them? Huh. <sighs> Everything alright? I shook my hands, I shook my hands and then toweled them off with a nearby cloth. Yeah, it's just that I've lost my memory, my, but my body just knew how to wash my hands like I'd done it a thousand times. I can't recall a single time I actually have. 
Ah, I see. Since you stayed to... Mm, I should probably do it. Since you stayed to help with the meal, go ahead, go ahead and cut those veggies up for the stew. He gestured with the knife in his hand toward the cutting board off to the side that was surrounded by a few piles of different vegetables. I walked over and pulled a suitable chopping knife from the block on the counter. Looks like everything is peeled and washed, so all I have to do is chop them up. I grabbed the onion first and began cutting on cutting the top off the top and bottom before proceeding to chop it into relatively small pieces. I moved to the potatoes next and diced them up into bite-sized cubes and then moved on to the celery and carrots, cutting them into small pieces. By the time I finished all the vegetables, Mr. Jordan had already coated the meat and spices and was browning it in the onions in the pot. Thank you. You cut all these remarkably well. Either you're lying about the memory loss or you've done it enough times for your body to remember. I'm not lying. I really don't remember anything. And perhaps it's just muscle memory. Muscle memory? Like how I can still talk and breathe without having to think about it? Sorta. Some actions are so ingrained in your muscles that your body just goes through the motions so that you're having to think about what to do. Looks to be at some point you prepared so many veggies that your hands just moved and cut them without you needing to think about how to hold a knife, how to dice or chop a cure or chip or cube. You simply did it. I see, so there may be things my body remembers that my mind doesn't. Mr. Jurda grunted and gave a short nod. I offer some unsolicited advice. If you ask before giving it, it doesn't doesn't that make it un doesn't that make it solicited advice? Maybe not since I didn't ask for it. I shook my head slightly to clear my to clear the Clear the needless thoughts about solicited versus solic unsolicited versus solicited advice. Sure. Mr. Jordan hesitated. Probably trying to determine if my hand if my head shake meant no, but I still said yes. Try not to think about it too much. If your body knows how to do something, trust it. The more you're trying to f the more you're trying to figure out out the hows and whys, the more he'll you'll hinder yourself from remembering. An old friend of mine lost his memory for a day or two because he had been drunk as a skunk. Still knew how to do his job and stuff, but you ask him what his name was or basic math and he'd freeze up. Well, I don't think I was drunk, but who knows? Do you think my memory will come back in a couple days? Don't know. Thank you, by the way, for putting up with me and not telling Silas to leave me behind. One second, y'all. Water time. Okay. Oh, yeah, we weren't really properly introduced either. I held out my hand. I'm Marcus. Mr. Jurta took my hand and shook it. Maverick Jurta. Anyway, food should be done in about an hour and thirty. Why don't you go get freshened up and f freshened up for then? That does sound nice. I literally have no idea when the last time I bathed was. Sure. I made my way up the stairs, but glanced toward the entrance briefly. No sign of Silas yet. After I got upstairs, I headed to the room I would be staying in for the night and closed the door. I stripped down and headed into the bathroom. Damn it, it's big. I guess I should I guess I should have expected it to be. I walked over to the tub and Excuse me, y'all. I walked over to the tub and after some guesswork I managed to figure out how to get the hot water going and plug the drain. While it's filling up, I should probably look for some sort of soap. Silas said there should be some sundries here and there, here somewhere. I searched around a bit and finally found some bottles of fragrant liquids. The sides of the bottles were labeled as various bath oils. Looks like lavender, chamomile, and frankincense are my opinion my options. I gave a few of them a quick sniff before choosing. Let's choose the chamomile. I poured a decent amount of oil into the water, then returned the bottles to where I had found them. When I returned, there were bubbles beginning to form across the water's surface. Huh, I guess soap was mixed in with the chamomile oil, too. Soon the tub was filled enough, so I stopped the water and gently lowered myself into the warm water. Ah. <sighs> this feels amazing. I let myself sink a little lower. I leaned my head back against the tub and closed my eyes, letting my body relax. I could get used to this. I wonder, is this something I've done before, or have I always made do with what I could? Did I have a luxurious life, or did I live in a slum somewhere? I suppose there's no use in trying to push myself to remember. Like Mr. Jurdis said, it may be best to just let my mind and body work themselves out. I focused on my breathing and my body like Silas had shown me earlier when teaching me a magic. In and out. In and out. Slow and steady. Hmm? News. I won't. Oh. You doomed us all. I, I fix this. I need to eat. You must forget. No! I sat, bolt up, I sat bolt upright in the tub, sending waves of water over the edges onto the floor. I could feel my heart racing and my breaths were coming in rapid succession. What was that? 
What was that memory? I tried to recall details, but they were fading fast. There one moment and gone the next like flickering images and sounds. By the time I managed to calm myself down, all I could recall of the dream, memory, was bright colors and someone telling me to forget. What does it all mean? Did someone make me forget? Damn it! Just when I thought not having my memories was mysterious enough. I glanced out the window. The sun was still high in the sky, but I knew that didn't mean much to me. Mean too much since we weren't the same part of the world anymore. Crap. I hope I wasn't in there too long. I quickly washed up and stepped out of the tub, careful not to slip on the puddles around the tub that I had caused. After finding some towels, I dried the floor and myself, then I drained the water from the tub and headed into the bedroom. I grabbed my clothes and considered putting them back on, but decided against it. Best not undo the bathing I just did with dirty clothes. I headed over to the wardrobe, Silas had pointed out earlier. Looking inside, there were several outfits that looked leagues finer than what I had been wearing. Silas did say I should feel free to wear something from in, uh, from in here. Not wanting to take longer than needed, I picked out a simple outfit that consisted of a pair of nice trousers and a loose-fitting shirt similar to my old one. Well, this one was made of a rich blue fabric that was, light, that was light and soft. There were a few pairs of boots at the bottom of the wardrobe on the shelf. I decided that I didn't need to be wearing them while inside the house. One second, y'all. Water time. Last few minutes. Let's make it count. Okay. After getting used to, after getting dressed, I headed back into the bathroom to clean up the towels I'd used to dry all the puddles. I placed them into a wicker basket I hoped was for laundry. Heading to the mirror, I picked up a comb and had found. I picked up a comb I had found earlier when searching for the soap and ran it through my still slightly damp short hair. I glanced in the mirror. The image, the image of myself was a lot clearer here than it had been when using the pond. Overall, I looked good enough, though the sunken cheeks and dark circles under my eyes diminished my diminished any attractiveness I may have seen in myself. No wonder Silas took pity on me. It looked like I haven't eaten or slept in days. It's a bit difficult for him to give me those compliments from before, or he was just lying to make me feel better about myself. I left the bathroom and headed out the bedroom door into the hallway. From here, I could smell the delightful aroma of the stew and my stomach grumbled. Making my way down to the kitchen, I saw Mr. Jurda stirring a large pot of stew gently and taking a spoon to taste it. Glancing around, I didn't see Silas yet. Still no sign of Silas. Maybe I missed him and he went to the and he went to wash up in his room. Ah, young Marcus. Perfect timing. Stew's almost ready. Why don't you come over here and give her a swig? Uh, sure. I looked over and Mr. Jurda had scooped a small portion of stew into a wooden bowl and handed me a metal spoon along with it. I took a generous spoonful and blew on it to cool it slightly before putting it in my mouth. This is delicious. I tried not to make any weird pleasure noises as I took a second spoonful. This is delicious, Mr. Jurda. The front door opened and I turned to see Silas walk in. I guess he was still setting up the barrier. Welcome back, Master Teagland. Hey, Silas. Dinner's ready. Silas removed his boots and wandered to the kitchen. It smells delightful. Thank you both. I didn't do it. I didn't do much. Nonsense. You did plenty. Now both of you go sit and I'll serve you up some bowls. Silas and I did as he said and sat at the nearby table. Mr. Jurder brought us some, brought us both a steaming bowl of stew before serving himself and joining us at the table. We were all too preoccupied with filling our stomachs with a delicious stew to do much talking during our meal together. Once we had all of, once we had all finished eating and were satisfied, Silas got up and collected our bowls and began cleaning them. Master Teaglin, please allow me to clean up from the meal. You shouldn't be the one to do it. You two prepared the meal, so it's only fair that I will be, I will do the cleaning up. Mr. Jurder opened his mouth to disagree, but Silas continued. I'll not hear another word about it. While I was impairing the barrier, it looked as though it, would, it looked as though it may storm. I'd appreciate it if you could please check on the horse again and ensure its comfort for the night. As you wish, Master Teagland. Without another word, Jurda exited the house. <sighs> Silas was working on putting the leftover stew into a small container that I assumed was, an, was another arcanum of some sort. Uh, there's so much magic around. I wonder what kind of magic an entire academy would have. I rolled up my sleeves and headed to the sink where the dirty dishes were sitting. Silas didn't say anything as I began washing the dishes. He finished putting away the leftovers and brought the dirty pan over for me to wash before he grabbed the, no before he grabbed the now clean bowls and utensils and dried them off. That stew was absolutely delicious, by the way. Oh, Mr. Jurda handled most of it. I just chopped some vegetables. You did an excellent job of it. I've had meals from several cooks, and many of them couldn't get that quite right. Their meals still turned out all right, but if the vegetables aren't cut just right, it can lead to them being undercooked or overcooked. Yours were perfect. I tried not to blush at the compliments. I'm just glad I could help. You've done quite a bit of helping since we found you. Whether Mr. Jurda has said so himself or not, we do appreciate it. Thank you again for everything you two have done for me. If you hadn't come by, I don't know where I'd be right now. Thank you for being brave enough to trust me with the truth. Sadly, the world is running short on his souls. 
Having met you gives me hope that perhaps there is still goodness in people and humans in general. Right. From what you've told me about recent about recent history, there's a lot of injustice for beastmen and other races going on in the world. I don't think there's much someone like me can do about it, but knowing you makes me believe there's a lot more to like about beastmen than to fear. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.